Welcome to TMG Pulse, unwinding the headlines. The intention of this piece is to share with you the headlines over the last few weeks that'll help you unwind those headlines to make career decisions. None of this is a judgment from a stock price or what I personally think about the company, but what they are are some insights on how I think about betting my career or your career on the news in the public domain. So the first article up is Battle of the Bots, four robotic surgery rivalries to watch in the year ahead. This has got Intuitive, it's got j and it's got Medtronic, and it's got Cambridge Medical Robotics. All four of these are running right now. The interesting thing, though, about this is Intuitive, really, is the only approved platform out of those four. We've got Transenterics in the marketplace. We'll talk about them in a second. But now you've got Medtronic, who's got Hugo. They're down in South America doing clinical trials. We've got J&J &J with Verb, and we've got, of course, J&J &J with Oris. The Verb platform, still to be determined. What's going to happen there? Wondering if Oris has something behind the scenes that may blend with that. And then, of course, CMR, seeing what they're doing right now in their clinical initiatives overseas and also starting to get active here in the States. So from a career perspective, think about where each of those are along the way and also worry if they have enough dry powder, cash, money to keep going. The key here to keep in mind, though, is who has the commercial platform and how long is it going to be until we get a commercial platform on Verb and Medtronic, who, by the way, have already been delayed numerous times. There's talk about it being 2022, 2023. So if you're an engineer, that might not be a big issue. But if you're a sales commercial facing person, it might be. If you're a clinical person, it might be. So just be sensitive to where are we in that product development lifeline. Those are the soft tissue general surgery robots. Now the article jumps over to the orthopedic space. That's a different animal. Putting out an ortho platform is a lot easier than putting out a general surgery platform. You've got Stryker with Mako, you've got Medtronic with Mazur, you've got Nuvasiv with their delayed pulse. We'll talk about that in a second. We've got Zimmer with Rosa, and then we've got J&J &J with their Velus platform, yet to be defined. Now here's the one I'm watching, the Nuvasiv, the pulse platform. Very sophisticated platform. You've got imaging, you've got navigation, you've got surgical planning, you've got radiation prevention, and you've got robotics. That is a lot to wrap up into an orthopedic company who's never done CapEx before. So if I'm thinking about this from a career side, super interesting from an engineering perspective, but are they going to have enough money and are they going to have enough know-how to get that over the line as a competitive product, soon to be determined, no matter who they partner with? We cut to article number two, why Nuvasiv's pulse delay is actually a good thing. Look, putting a robot together, again, is super complicated. We've got many components here. And in that news release, they said, here it is, through insights learned during verification and validation, we're going to take more time to figure this out. You know what that tells me? It's not easy to put out a robot. What you design inside your organization, then put in the hands of the surgeons and the workflow and in a clinical setting, the lessons learned are profound. And this is what oftentimes sends organizations back to the drawing board to rethink and reimagine what they're putting out and probably put out a stripped down version. And then our third headline, Transanteryx Registered Public Offering. Oof, this is an interesting one. I'm a big fan of Transanteryx. I think they're an organization filled with fantastic people. They made it into the robotic space in what was it, 2006 or so. They got their FDA sort of blessing in 16 or 17 finally. But they've been in the game for a super long time. The challenge with robotic platforms, especially large format robotic platforms, is it requires a ton of money to sustain, not to just put out. And here's the problem with having a publicly traded company that is standing on one product, one platform. Wall Street punishes you on quarter to quarter basis. And when you build a robot, you need to have an infinite mindset because it's years and years to get that over the line. So how do you report back to Wall Street on a quarter to quarter basis to shareholders who aren't in the game with you for the long haul 
they're only renting your stock on a quarter to quarter basis, you're going to get punished. Look at the stock. The stock, 52 week high, 33 bucks. Trading at today, 38 cents. Did the technology bomb that bad? Or did just Wall Street punish it as it compares it to others walking into the space? Really good question. So if I'm betting my career on that, that technology may very well be valid. In fact, it's approved. They can sell that in the US. Medtronic does not have a soft tissue. J&J doesn't have a soft tissue robot. Transenteric does. What does that mean? I think about that. Everything's being pulled back right now. In fact, they've probably cleared out their sales organization, pared down their marketing organization, and probably a conserving burn and money. So think before you go there. Now, having said that, I personally believe that's an acquisition waiting to happen. When you have a platform the FDA has already said yes to, and J&J &J and Medtronic are potentially two to three years off from having a platform that they can sell legitimately in the US, that's a very interesting proposition. So if you go to Transanteryx right now, you run the risk of a few things, being light in the wallet, and also having it go through an integration over the next 12 to 24 months. My guess is that team goes stealth for a while, they've got really solid IP, they've got a nice product, but they're gonna run out of gas. Because when you put out a robot, You've got to design, you've got to develop, you've got to run through V and V, you've got to have interaction with the surgeons and docs and users and workflow, you've got to then launch, you've got to then sell, then you have to support, and all while that's going on and you're commercial, you've got to have ongoing product development occur, software, hardware, firmware, cloud. You cannot stop there. Medtech is not used to that, historically. So again, unwinding the headlines for you. That's your news for this week. Joe Mullings, unwinding the headlines.